If you're coming across this video, you're wondering how on earth am I supposed to hold the violin bow? How am I supposed to hold this wooden stick that helps me create a sound? Well, in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to hold the violin bow using the Franco-Belgian bow holds. So stick around, you don't want to miss this. Hi there, my name is Eric. If we're meeting for the first time, I'm a violinist. Thanks so much for coming across this YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications for when you get notified for future videos. And question of the day, what bow hold are you familiar with? There are different kinds of bow holds out there. I want to have a conversation with you down in the comments below because not every violinist likes Franco-Belgian. I know there's also a Russian bow grip and others. So please make sure to hit the, uh, hit the comments section for what bow hold you use. This video is going to be for the beginner, but if you're an intermediate or an advanced student, this uh, is also like a good refresher to kind of go back to basics as to how you're gonna hold the violin bow because holding the bow identifies as like one of the key elements of producing a good sound. Step one, if you have what we call like this little eye here, you know, in the Suzuki method, we call this like an eye. Some, uh, some teachers like to call this like a magnet and it uh, depends on the students. Sometimes an eye like helps them because it's like more of a visual thing. And sometimes students are like, they, they really learn by like feeling, feeling the bow hold. So I, I tell them that make sure you use your ring finger and try to cover the eye or try to match the finger to the magnet. And you're gonna find that this will work 99% of the time, that this ring finger is covering the eye. And then these two fingers, the index finger and the middle finger, are gonna slightly hover over this way. And what I also like to describe to my students is that these first lines, these joints from our fingers, if you can see right here, are also our magnets. So not only do we have our third finger holding the bow, but these two fingers are holding the bow as well with the first line of our finger, the first joint. Now, the, now we have the pinky and the pinky is the only exception where the pinky needs to be on the pinky tip. So now we're all of a sudden, we have our fingers kind of curvy. If you look from this angle, all my fingers are curved. Now the one thing that we're missing is the thumb, but we'll get to that in a moment. I would like you, if you're following along with this video, I want you to place your wrist down and also your knuckles. So that way we have a nice flat hand because we can always put our wrist down, but if our knuckles are up, then we're kind of, we're not really having that curvature with our fingers. And then we run into the risk of having the Russian bow grip, which, you know, different violinists use all the time. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna do it this way. And if you are teaching a beginner or if you have a young student in the household and they don't have this eye on their bow, um, it really helps to maybe use a pencil and also like use a, like a soft graphite tip to circle this or even a sticker, like a, like a star or like, I don't know, their favorite cartoon sticker. So that way they can feel out where that sticker is. So use the, use the ring finger, cover the eye, or hover over the f sticker, whatever, whatever the case may be. These two fingers, using the first joint, are gonna hover over the exterior, of this side of the bow. This pinky is at the tip, that's the only exception, and the thumb we'll get to in a moment. So now, put your knuckles and your wrist down this way. And you notice how my fingers are automatically curved. Now, the thumb. There are two ways to hold the bow. If you're a complete beginner, I want you to put the thumb down below because this gives you more control of the bow if you're a complete beginner. If you're more of an intermediate, you're gonna place the thumb in between this thumb leather and this edge of the frog. So that is one way and then if you're a beginner this is another way uh, you know all violinists 
should have the thumb in between the thumb leather and the frog tip. Either way, you need to make sure that your thumb has like a curve. And I usually say bump in your thumb. This is also to kind of help prevent injuries because if you have a thumb that is this way, you're actually creating a lot of tension in your wrist. Disclaimer, I'm not a physician. I'm not a, an Alexander Technique uh, technician. I'm none of those things. This is just based off my own personal experience because I did experience pain in the past. So this is just uh, my first-hand knowledge of having a bow hold. So either way, you want to make sure that you're holding your violin bow and all the fingers are curvy. None of the, because the moment you have a finger that is straight, then you, you might notice how my fingers actually force my wrist and my knuckles higher. And I'm creating a lot of tension in this region of the hand near the wrist. And that can cause potential problems for injuries. So quick review, use your ring finger, cover the eye. First two fingers are kind of touching the magnet of the violin, magnet, you know, quotes. And then the pinky is in the pinky tip, the thumb, you're gonna place the wrist and the knuckles down and then place our thumb in between the thumb leather and the finger and the frog. And that is one of the ways to hold your violin bow. If you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button. Please make sure to hit those bell notifications to get notified on when those videos come out. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.